சுருதி ஸ்மிருதி புராணானாம் ஆலயம் கருணாலயம் நமாமி பகவத் பாத சங்கரம் லோகசங்கரம் அபார கருணா சிந்தும் ஞானதம் சாந்தரூபிணம் ஸ்ரீசந்திரசேகர குரு பிரணமாமி உதான் மகம் ராம் ராம் ஸ்ரீ குருபியோ நம கண்ணன் சார் வில் எக்ஸ்பிளைன் in detail how much periwal has been guiding us in this series of lectures so i start with a vandanam to periwal on on behalf of everybody here it is always a challenge to introduce people like kannan sir Saundarya Lagari, last sloka, we all know says, Pridiba, Jolabir, Diva Shakara, Nirajana Vidhi. Kannan Sar is, Anga Potrukira, Suryan. Now, Richinna Deepam. Now, and the Kannan Sar, Suryan and Vilchin, Kannan Sar, So, all I want to say is, on behalf of everybody we feel blessed that we will be able to listen to him morning and evening for the next 50 days so it's a blessing that periwal has given us and therefore we are thankful to you maha periwal i think in volume 6 talks extensively about ஆதி சங்கரா ஸ்தோத்திரங்கள் இன் தமிழ் ஹி சமரைசஸ் இட் பை சேயிங் அருளால் பிறந்த கவிதை அருளை செய்கிற கவி அருளே கவிதை டிவினிட்டி ஸ்பீக்ஸ் டிவினிட்டி பெஸ்டவுட் அண்ட் divinity itself the reason he says is adi shankara is not an ordinary human being he was an inspired person he himself says prudi abhir vagbir tava kruti reyam abale நான் சொல்கிற வார்த்தைகள் எல்லாம் உன்னுடைய வார்த்தைகள் ஸோ தி ஃபர்ஸ்ட் திங் இஸ் இட் இஸ் டிவினிட்டி ஸ்பீக்கிங் செகண்ட் ஆதி சங்கரா இஸ் நாட் அன் ஆர்டினரி கம்போசர் தமிழ் மகா பரிவால் சேஸ் அனுபவ ஆனந்த நிலையில் சொன்னதுன்னு ஸோ வென் ஹீ வாஸ் இன் ஐக்கியம் வித் அம்பான் or the chair is the god that is when he composed this and therefore for those of us who are privileged to listen he says divinity is bestowed third he actually says in these words we actually can see divinity itself and that's why he says it is divinity speaking divinity the sound and divinity itself and he adds there is a bonus the bonus is actually adi shankara who lived 2500 years back lives in our presence through this stotra so mahaprabhu says you have an opportunity to visualize adi shankara and experience his stotra kudupuri was jayendra saraswati swami gali he has also extensively extensively
at least reasonably understand the meaning of these stotras. It is in that context that we are privileged that we have someone of the scholarship of Kanansar explaining us the meaning so that as Perival says, Bhava Dadartha Mama Manah. This kind of a thing cannot happen without the seva of people like VDSP Rajagopalan and the other volunteers who deal with all the IT issues. So with my vandanam to Periwal and on behalf of all of you, namaskaram to Kanansar, I say thank you very much. Shrutisprati Purananam Alayam Karunalayam Namami Bhagavat Pada Shankaram Loka Shankaram Sadashivatamaram Bham Shankaracharya Madhyamam Asmadacharya Parjantam Bande Guru Param Param Randan Sundar sir has given a beautiful introduction. We are starting today on a very auspicious day, Kartikai Deepam Day, the day on which Shiva stood as a stambha, a pillar of glorious light. Light means jnana. So, this is the day of exhibition, exposition of Jnana. So, we are lucky that we are starting this lecture series on all the Shankara Stotras, which are all Jnana related on this auspicious day. This day was chosen by Pariva himself. This entire series has been devised by Pariva. He himself has decided on the start date, the end date, the end date of Makara Sankranti day, the morning session at what time, evening session at what time, morning session in Tamil, evening session in English. All details have been given by Pariva himself, have been blessed by Pariva himself. Now, uh, we prepared the list of Sotras that also was approved by Pariva. We had uh, done a similar uh, program in 2021 with uh, KKSF as the coordinator. At that time, for six months, we had a course, January to July, two uh, hours every week. And we covered 25 sotras of Adi Shankara at that time. Now, this time we have chosen sotras which do not coincide with those sotras. We have chosen new ones. And two large ones we have chosen this time. Shivananda Lahari and Saundari Lahari, both 100 shlokas. And uh, the title given to the series by Pariva himself is Bande Gurur Mandalam. Gurur Mandalam normally means the Guru Parampara, immediate Guru Parampara, the Guru, Parama Guru, Paratpara Guru, Parameshti Guru. Now, this is called Guru Mandalam. And uh, in fact, we have uh, Guru Panchakam in Vyasa Puja. Similarly, in Shaktam, uh, they have a different definition of Guru or Mandalam. And that not only includes these Gurus, it also includes Ganapati, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, Vatuka Bhairavas, the Matrika, Matrika Devi that is uh, later from R to Ksha, etc. etc. It's a huge Guru Mandalam. But what we are now concentrating on in this series of lectures is the Guru Mandalam of books. Guru has given us a Pustaka Mandalam. Adi Shankara Guru has blessed us with a Pustaka Mandalam. As we say in Saraswati Puja, Asmin Pustaka Mandalam, Saraswati Dhyayami, Avahayami, etc. Pustaka is also, Pustaka Mandala is also there in reference. So, here we are interpreting Guru Mandalam as the Pustaka Mandalam blessed by Adi Shankara 
and that includes different categories of books. There are three broad categories, as all of us know, the Bhashya categories, the Vedanta Prakarana Grantha categories, and the Stotra categories. Now, in the Stotra category also, we have every Stotra glorifying, centering itself on Advaita Jnana. Every Stotra. There is, every, you will not find any Stotra of Adi Shankara which does not have some reference to Advaita Jnana. So that is the beauty of all these Stotras and we are lucky that uh, we have been uh, given an opportunity to delve into these Stotras by Kareva. With his blessings, we start this series and uh, recently we concluded with his blessings the Moka Panchashati series which uh, went on for one year under the auspice of Kamakoti Bhakti Kendra, uh, one uh, lecture per week, uh, and all the 500 shokas were covered. That also was blessed by Priva only. Now, in this uh, lecture series, um, Sri uh, London Sundar is the main coordinator appointed by Pariva himself. Pariva himself, he personally took the list of sotras to Pariva and got it approved. And uh, he has been guiding the proceedings. Kala Malini is the main coordinator who has been assisting us with uh, various groups of volunteers. There are volunteers who have been preparing slides. There are volunteers who are going to chant with us during the series. And there, there are uh, coordinators who are coming up for every session to assist in the technicalities. Now, all these volunteers are being coordinated by Kala Malini. And uh, every session, we have a person who will chant the shlokas along with me. Now, morning, we had Lata Ganesh. Now, we have uh, Sri Lakshmi. And uh, Raja Gopal of uh, Veda Dharma Shastra Prepalana Sabha, who is known to everyone as an extremely active volunteer of Sri Matam. He has been driving, he is the driving force for all telecasts of Sri Matam. Wherever you find a telecast of Sri Matam, that means Raja Gopal is the one who is doing it. So he has been very kindly guiding all these volunteers, uh, Gala Malini and her team, on the nuances of uh, StreamYard and everything else connected with conduct of this show. And uh, the procedure we have adopted for uh, this explanation series is that uh, the person who chants the shloka, today Sri Lakshmi, she will uh, chant the shloka and I will follow it up with uh, explanation, detailed explanation and I will also chant the shloka once and then we go to the next shloka in the same order. And uh, those who have any questions can type the questions in YouTube or in StreamYard in the comments uh, section. And uh, our coordinator will uh, read out those questions and I will try to answer them at the close of this session. So I think we'll start now without further uh, expenditure of time. We start with Ganesha Pancharatnam. Sorry, Ganesha Bhujangam. Bhujangam is a meter, Bhujanga Prayatam. That is the meter, one of the very popular meter, Chandas in Sanskrit poetry. And uh, uh, Adi Shankara himself has uh, authored not only Ganesha Bhajangam, he has authored Shiva Bhajangam, Devi Bhajangam, Subramanya Bhajangam, etc. etc. Uh, Bhajangam has got a very beautiful, majestic style of presentation and very sweet, very interesting. We will enjoy that. Uh, yeah, uh, Sri Lakshmi, you can start now. Pediyava Sharanam. Shri Ganesha Bhujanga Stotram Ranat Kshudra Ghanta Ninada Bhiramam Chalatanda Vodanda Vatpadmatalam Lasatundilango Parivyala Haram Ganadhi Shamisha Nasunum Tamide. Now, this is a picture of Dhritya Ganapati, dancing Ganapati. Ganapati is dancing and that is picturized in this shloka. Now he is having uh, small bells tied around his body in various places, around his waist, around the neck and so on. 
Now those small bells, which are called here Shudra Ghanta, Ranate Shudra Ghanta. Shudra Ghanta means small bell. Those small bells are making beautiful sounds. Ninada, Ranate means sounding. The Ninada is the sound coming from the Shudra Ghanta. Abhiramam, that means Ganapati is so enchanting. Abhirama means enchanting. You cannot take your eye off him. That kind of beauty, that kind of enchantment. So, he is enchanting with not only his form, but also with the beautiful accompanying sounds coming from those small bells. Then, the Tandava is described in the next line. Kalat Tandava Uddandavatu Padmatalam. Uddandavatu means like a raised staff, Danda. Like a raised staff. That means he is standing straight in the dance posture and he is tapping his feet and he is also shaking his ears, which are not possible for ordinary human beings. Now, he has got a special pair of ears, Surpakarna, that is why he is known as. Those two Surpa type ears, he is shaking during the dance to the Tala. Now, this uh, shaking of ears, shaking of the uh, tapping of the feet, etc., etc., are all known as Padmatalam, Chalat, it is a mobile situation, moving situation, Tandava, beautiful Tandava, he is moving here and there. Lasa Tundi Longo Pari Vyalaharam. Vyalaharam means garland of snakes. Vyala means snakes. He is having a mala of snake tied around his waist on his. Large belly, Tundila means large belly. Tundila Anga, the large belly part, Opari on the top of the large belly part. He is having a Vyalahara, a snake garland, which is shining. Snakes themselves shine and added to the shine of Ganapati, they are shining even more. Lasatu. Ganadhisham, Ishana, Sunum, Sam, Ide. Ganadhisha means the Lord of Ganas. Shiva has got Rudra Ganas, Pramatha Ganas, and so many other Ganas. Even Preta, Pishacha are his Ganas. Now, he is, Ganesha is the head of all the Ganas. He, that's why he is known as Gana Isha, Gana Pati, Gana Adhisha here, Gana Adhisham. Isha Ana Sonam, the son of Parameshwara. Some day I praise him. So, here, we have a picture of Nritya Ganapati, who is very enchanting, not only because of his form, but also because of the sounds emanating from those small bells, which are sounding all the time during the dance. And because of the Padmatala, majestically he is standing and dancing, Tandava dance, and he is tapping his feet and his uh, uh, shaking his surpa ears at the beauty. and. Uh, he has a beautiful snake garland tied around his large belly which is shining. And that kind of Ganapati, Shivaputra, I praise. Pranakshudra Ghanta Ninada Bhiramam Chalatanda Vodandavat Padmatalam Rasatundilango Parivyalaharam Ganaji Shamesha Nasunam Tabide. Next. Dvanidvam Savina Layola Sivakram Spura Chunda Dandola Sadbija Puram Galadar Pasaugan Dhyalola Limalam Ganadhi Shamisha Nasunum Tamide. Now, further description of Ganapati's form. Ullasi Vatram. Vatram means face, Mukham. Vatram means Mukham, face. Ullasi means sporting, playful. Very happy, very playful face he is having. And he is normally having a playful face. Now, there is a special reason also here for his being uh, having a playful, playful face. And that is Dhanidvamsa Veena Laya. 
his mind is merged laya I mean merging of the mind with the sound come emanating from the veena dhvani dhamsa veena sounds emanating from the veena which are so sweet so musical his mind is merged with that and his his face is so playful and so happy purakshunda danda ullasat bijapuram bijapuram is pomegranate fruit it is having only bija inside only seeds that is why it is called bijapuram that fruit a favorite of ganapati ullasat means even the pomegranate fruit which he is holding in his shunda danda shunda means the trunk it is like a staff like a danda that soft like trunk he is holding this uh, pomegranate which is lasat which is shining how can pomegranate shine pomegranate shine because of ganapati is shine sphurat means shining sphurat means shining as well as moving here we can take the meaning of moving because the uh, trunk is moving here and there along with that the bijapura is also moving and it is shining galadarp saugandhya lolali malam galat darpa darpa is the aikhar the when the elephant is in rut it sheds some juice from the temple that is called darpa aikhar that intoxicating juice which is galat means which is oozing out from his mastaka saugandhya it has beautiful sweet scent and because of the sweet scent lola ali malam ali means bees these bees are like a mala like a string a string of bees is sitting on his face lola mean greedy desirous of this uh, sweet scent which is emanating from the uh, juice which is coming out of his temple ganadhi shamilsha na sunum tamide i praise the ganapati so putra so he has in this picturization he is having a beautiful playful face his mind is merged in the sweet sounds coming from the veena and his long trunk is having is shaking during his movement here and there and it is having a shining bijapura pomegranate fruit and there is a string of bees sitting on his face which are stuck to his face because of the attraction of the sweet scent of the aikhar the juice coming from the temple of the elephant and i praise that ganapati shivaputra dhanidvam savena layolla sivatram purachonda dandol lasadbijapuram jaladarpa saugandhya lolali malam janadhi shameshana sonum tamide प्रकाशजपारक्तरत्न प्रसून प्रवाल प्रभाताुण्योतिरेक प्रलंबोदर वक्रतुंडकदंत गणाधीशमीशा न सून तमीडे फर्दर डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द फॉर्म ऑफ गणपति now the first two lines are talking about the reddish glow which is there on his form the red red colored glow which is on his form now that glow is described by comparing it with so many other similar reddish colored radiances now prakasha the shine of japa japa is the flower china rose Shambhariti in Tamil, Japa flower. Japa Rakta Ratra Prasuna. Prasuna is the flower. Japa goes with Prasuna, Japa flower. And then Rakta Ratna Pravala. Pravala is coral. And it is red colored. Rakta means red colored, blood colored. Ratna, it is a gem. So that kind of Pravala has got two meanings. That kind of coral. Also, shoot, the tender shoot of the coral. a creeper is also called pravala now that is also reddish in color then prabhata aruna jyotihi ekam 
பிரபாத மார்னிங் ஆஸ் சூன் ஆஸ் அட் த டைம் ஆஃப் டான் ஆஸ் சூன் ஆஸ் த சன் இஸ் ரைசிங் அட் தட் டைம் யூ ஹாவ் தி அருண ஜோதி த ரேடியன்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் அருணா த ரைசிங் சன் ஏக்கம் தட் இஸ் யுனீக் ஜஸ்ட் ஆஸ் அருண ஜோதி இஸ் யுனீக் you cannot compare aruna jyoti with something else can you compare the rising sun radiance with any other radiance on earth no so similarly ganapati is radiance is unique you cannot compare with even aruna jyoti or even the japa flower or even the tender shoot of the creeper or even the coral stone they are all only comparisons to to tell us about the beauty the glory of the red colored shine which கணபதி இஸ் ஹேவிங் பிரலம்போதரம் வக்ர தொண்டை கதந்தம் பிரலம்ப உதரம் லம்போதரம் இஸ் குட் இனஃப் ஹி இஸ் ஆடிங் ப்ர அஃப்கோர்ஸ் தெர் இஸ் அ மீட்டர் இன் த ஸ்லோகா ப்ர மீன்ஸ் பிரகர்ஷேன தட் இஸ் ஸ்பெஷல் யூ கே நாட் ஹேவ் திஸ் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் லம்போதரா எனிவேர் எல்ஸ் தட் இஸ் ஸ்பெஷல் வெரி ஸ்பெஷல் லம்போதரா மீன்ஸ் லாங் பிக் ஹேங்கிங் பெல்லி it's a big hanging belly because the, all the universes are contained in his belly vakra tunda means bent curved trunk now that curved trunk gives an appearance of omkara omkara swarupa that is why you describe ganapati form as omkara swarupa that vakra tunda is the major component of this omkara swarupa also vidwans have interpreted vakra tunda to mean வக்ரான் துண்டயதி இது வக்ர துண்டஹா தட் மீன்ஸ் ஹீ ஹி டெசிமேட்ஸ் துண்டயதி மீன்ஸ் ஹீ டெசிமேட்ஸ் ஹீ கில்ஸ் தோஸ் ஹூ ஆர் நாட் ஃபாலோயிங் தர்மா வக்ரா மீன்ஸ் ஒன் ஹூ இஸ் நாட் ஃபாலோயிங் தர்மா ஒன் ஹூ இஸ் க்ரூக்கெட் ஆக்சுவலி டைரக்ட் மீனிங் இஸ் க்ரூக்கெட் வக்ரா ஏகதந்தம் சிங்கிள் டஸ்க் நார்மலி எலிஃபெண்ட் ஹஸ் டூ டஸ்க் பட் ஹியர் வி ஹேவ் சிங்கிள் டஸ்க் பிகாஸ் ஒன் டஸ்க் ஹீ ரிமூவ்ட் during the battle with gajamukha asura for killing that asura because he could not be killed by any other weapon he used his danta as the weapon and killed him another use to which he put his danta was when he wrote mahabharata as dictated by vedavyasa so there is an interesting story behind this vedavyasa when he was composing mahabharata he wanted somebody to write down as he dictated and that short hand writer was mahaganapati himself so at that time he imposed the condition on ganapati that whatever i dictate you should write in the same speed you should not be sluggish you should go on writing as i go on speaking now ganapati put a counter condition he said i will do that no uh, no not only that vyasa also put a condition that he should understand and write ganapati should understand clearly the meaning and then only write so uh, ganapati put a counter condition you should go on dictating without stopping it should be a continuous flow then only if you stop i will go away so what vyasa did was after 10 or 20 shlokas he used to compose a very difficult verse so that ganapati will take some time in understanding without understanding he cannot right so during that time lag he used to compose the next 10 or 20 shlokas in his mind so this is how he used to buy time now if you see uh, mahabharata this kind of structure you will find in the shlokas so this is a very beautiful instance but the lesson is not this lesson is yaga now danta which is the most attractive part of the elephant now ganapati was willing to sacrifice for the good of the world so that is the lesson unless you are prepared to sacrifice you cannot advance in spiritual life yaga is the stepping stone for advancement in spiritual life yagenaiki amrutatva manasuhu na karmana na prajaya dhanena this is what veda says you cannot advance by mere karma you cannot advance by your progeny you cannot advance by your wealth only because of yoga sacrifice 
you can advance in spiritual life. That too, very few people, Tyaga in AK, very few people can attain moksha by Tyaga. So that kind of Tyaga is illustrated by Ganapati in this Ekadanta form. Now, even the other famous to celebrated uh, poem of Adi Shankara, Ganesha Pancharatnam, ends like this. Tam ekadantam ekameva chintayami santatam. Tam ekadantam ekameva chintayami santatam. That is how it ends. So there also, he ends with ekadanta because of the emphasis on Tyaga. Otherwise, he could have ended with so many other names of Mahaganapati. But he chose ekadanta because of the emphasis on Tyaga. So that kind of Ganapati, that kind of that Shivaputra, I praise, who is, whose reddish colored glow is comparable to the red colored glow of the rising sun or the red colored glow of a growing tender shoot of a plant or the japa flower, which is very red colored. They are all red colored and Ganapati Jyoti is comparable to those. And he is having a hanging large belly and his trunk is curved, crooked and he has got a single tusk. That kind of Ganapati, that Shivaputra, I praise. Prakasha Japarakta Ratna Prasona Pravala Prabhata Runa Jyoti Rekam Pralambodaram Vakra Tundai Kadantam Vichitraspuradratnamalakiritam Kiritolasachandrarekhavibhusham Vibhushaika bhusham bhavadvam sahetum Ganadhi shamisha nasunum tamide. In the third line, there is a typing mistake in the slide. Vibhushaika bhusham, not bhusham. Now, here also, his form, Ganapati's form, is further described. The beauty of his form is further described. Now, all these descriptions of the forms are meant to instill bhakti in us because during meditation, during dhyana, you need a nama and a rupa. Without nama rupa, you cannot do any dhyana. At least ordinary people cannot do dhyana. Ordinary people cannot do dhyana on nirakara swarupa, only glow, only light, without any form, without any name. All this is easy to talk, but not easy to practice. For practicing dhyana, you need a form and a name. Now, that is why this form, that is why you find always there is a dhyana shloka for every sotra. In the dhyana shloka, the form of the devata is fully described so that you keep that form in mind while you read the sotra. So, that gives you the attention, the concentration. So, that form is further described here. Vichitra Spurat Ratnamala Kiritam. His Kiritam, the crown on his head, is being described as having a Ratnamala, a garland of, a golden garland in which gems are <coughs> embedded. Gem studded garland, <coughs> Navaratna, gem studded garland, he is having on the crown. Spurat, it is shining, not just shining, Vichitra Spurat, it is shining with different colors because it has Navaratna embedded in the crown. They are all <coughs> throwing radiances of different colors in different directions and that is Vichitra, beautiful. Kirita Ullasatu Chandra Rekha Vibhusham On the top of the crown, Ullasatu, that means it can be interpreted as very happy, very pleasing. Chandra Rekha Vibhusham, ornament of crescent moon. Chandra Rekha is crescent moon. So, that 
crescent moon is also shining. Ullasathu can be interpreted as shining. Rasathu means shining. Ullasathu means very much shining. Very much shining crescent moon is there as an ornament on the top of the crown. Vibhusha ekabhusham. That means all ornaments are generally owned by people as beauty enhancements. But here the ornaments are not enhancing the beauty of Ganapati. Ganapati is lending his beauty to the ornaments. Ornaments are beautiful because they are on the form of Ganapati. It is not that Ganapati is beautiful because of the ornaments. So he is the Ekabhusha. He is the single ornament for all the ornaments. Vibhusha Ekabhusha. He is the single ornament behind the glow of all the ornaments. Bhavadhvamsa Hetum. Hetu means the cause. The cause for destruction of samsara. Bhava means samsara. Bhava is actually, it means birth, being born. Now, birth always is followed by death. So, the cycle of birth and death is called samsara, to which we keep returning because of our karma. Now, unless the karma is, karma cycle is broken, all karmas are extinguished, you cannot get out of this cycle. Now that extinguishing, who will do? Ganapati will do if you worship him. So he is the cause of the destruction of the cycle of samsara. So without his help, it is not possible for us to get out of this dangerous, most difficult cycle of samsara. And also in this shloka, we have a reference to Chandra Rekha, the uh, crescent moon, Chandrama Manaso Jataha, so says Veda. Chandra is the Devata for the mind. There is a Devata for each important organ or in the body of the human being. Now for the mind, the Devata is Chandra. So if you concentrate your attention on the Chandra Rekha, which is adorning his crown, Ganapati's crown, your mind also will become purer and purer. And that will help Ganapati in destroying your karma and taking on to ahead on the moksha path. So this is all connected because Manameva Manushyanam Karanam Bandha Moksha Yoho. That is what Upanishad says. Manayeva Manushyanam Karanam. It is only the mind which is the reason, which is the cause for getting bound to the samsara or getting released from this samsara, bandha moksha yoho. So that mind is controlled by Chandra. And if you concentrate on the Chandra, which is on the head of uh, Ganapati, he is going to help you break this chain. And that Ganapati, that Shivaputra, I praise. Now his crown has got be a beautiful gem studded, Navaratna studded uh, mala on the crown, which is shedding beautiful different colored radiances and on the top of the crown he is having the crescent moon which is shining like a big beautiful ornament and in fact Ganapati is the ornament behind all the ornaments he is the one who is lending his shine to those all the ornaments and he is the only cause for the destruction of the samsara cycle I pray to that Shivaputra that Ganapati Vichitra Spuradratna Mala Kiritam Kirito Lasachandra Rekha Vibhusham Vibhushaika Bhusham Bhavadvam Sahetum Ganadhi Samishana Sunum Samide Udan Chad Bhujavalari Drushya Mulot Chalad bhru lata vibhrama bhraja daksham Marut sundari cha marai sevyamanam Kanadhi shamisha nasunum tamide <coughs> Further description of the form of Ganapati. Udanchate Bhuja Vallari Drishya Mula. Bhuja Vallari. Bhuja is the arm. 
the long arm which Ganapati is having, that he has raised his arm. Udayan Chatur means a raised arm, not hanging down. The raised arm, which is like a vallari, which is like a creeper, like a lata, like a creeper. Drishya, it is so beautiful to look at. Drishya is a beautiful scene. Now, that vallari, that creeper, is going and joining Mula. It has at its base the face. On the face, Chalatu, Bhrulata, Vibhrame, Bhraja, Daksham. Bhru is also equated to Lata. Bhru is the bro, eyebrow. The eyebrow is also similar to a creeper. It is always likened to a creeper by poets. So, Chalatu means the uh, uh, eyebrow is constantly moving here and there in a very beautiful manner. And it is shedding its shine, Braja means shine, in all directions. And that causes Vibrahma. Vibrahma means happiness as well as a kind of intoxication, Brahma. That kind of intoxication, that kind of happiness, that kind of delight is caused by the shine of the eyebrow, which Ganapati is moving here and there. And he is an expert in that. Daksha means expertise. Daksha is expert. He is the master in projecting this kind of shine and causing this kind of delusion, this kind of happiness by moving his eyebrows, the creeper-like eyebrows. Marut Sundari Samarehi Sevyamanam. He is attended by, he is surrounded by Devaloka women. Marut Sundari is Devaloka women. Maru Sundari, Deva Sundari. Devas are classified into several categories, and one of the categories is Marut. Marut is the wind, Vayu. Vayu Devatas are called Marut Devatas. Here it generally means all Devatas. Those Devata women are attending on him and uh, serving him with Chamara. Chamara Seva they are doing. Chamarehi Sevyamanam. The Tauri. Marut Sundari, Tamarehi, Sevgyamanam. That kind of Ganapati, that Shivapatra, I pray to. His long arm, which is hanging, is like a creeper, and he has raised that arm. And it is a beautiful scene. And at the base of that arm is the face on which his beautiful eyebrows, he keeps moving here and there. The eyebrows are like a creeper. And the shine coming out of those eyebrows is causing delight to the extent of intoxication on the onlooker. And he is an expert in producing that kind of impression. And he is served by Devaloka women who are using samaras to uh, serve him. And that Ganapati, that Shavapatra, I pray to. Next. Ah, Udin Chad Bhuja Vallari Drishyamu Ro Salad Bhrulata Vibrama Braja Daksham Marut Sundari Tamare Sevyamanam Ganadi Sami Sana Sunum Sami De Spuran Nishturalo Lapinga Kshitaram Krupa ko malodara lila vataram Kala bindu gamgi yate yogi varyair ganadhi shamisha nasunum tamide Now, further description of the form. Uh, next shloka, we are going to the formless aspect of Ganapati. Now, up to circa number 6, we are in the form description. Suratu nishthure alole pinge akshitaram. Akshi means the eye. Tara is the pupil in the eye. Pinga means the red colored. The red colored pupil in the eye, which keeps moving here and there, all over. Suratu, it is shining. It is moving and it is shining. 
and uh, it is signing not in a very happy position to signing because he is very angry purat nishthura nishthura me harsh out of anger out of anger his the pupil of his eye is red colored and it is moving here and there and it is shining why he is angry and why he is why the uh color is reddish brown tawny color that is actually pinga why it is so because he wants to show his anger toward evil people toward evil forces because destruction of evil forces is necessary for establishment of dharma isn't it you cannot have uh, evil force thriving and then you simultaneously you cannot establish dharma so for establishing dharma evil forces have to be removed and virtuous forces have to be encouraged so the first line is about destruction of evil forces the second line is about encouragement of virtuous forces kripa komala udara leela avataram avataram is as you know incarnation here it means he has taken a form the formless parabrahmam has taken a form for benefiting for showing his anugraha on human kind and that is the leela avataram did he make any effort for taking this avatar no it is a very playful with no effort he has come into this form and what kind of form he has taken kripa komala udara it is a very compassionate form marked by compassion marked by softness komala and marked by benevolence udara munificence very munificent very soft very smooth very compassionate these are his leelas so that kind of leela he is playing in his ganapati avatar so leela can be interpreted as the plays the sports which he is engaged in as well as leela avatar that means he has taken this avatar sportingly without any effort so as you know all these poems can be interpreted in several ways that is the beauty that is the expertise of the author after all they are all adi shankara stotra kala bindugam niyate yogi varyaihi by the shrestha yogi yogi shrestha the best of yogi yogi varya by them niyate he is being sung he is being praised in song as what as kala bindugam he is at the center of all arts kala is arts all knowledge in fact arts does not mean as opposed to science no it doesn't mean that it means everything all knowledge which is available in this world is kala there are 64 kalas which are uh, mentioned in shastra and they are all representations of all departments of knowledge so all the departments of knowledge are kala and bindu is the center of the knowledge now he is the one who is at the center of the knowledge all knowledge emanates from him without him there is no knowledge and without his blessing you cannot approach any knowledge that is what the yogi shrestha or thinking about this kalabindugam lends itself to another interpretation that is this srishti this creation is known as nada bindu kala it starts with sound the omkara of the vedas nada then it goes into the bindu state the solid state and that single dot expands into the universe which is the kala so it is a process of creation of the universe now who is the force behind this process of creation ganapati after all parabrahmam wants to create this universe and he goes and create with the help of maya that is what vedanta says now with that parabrahmam has taken the form of ganapati so he is the, the center of all this creation at the back of all this creation that kind of ganapati that shivaputra i pray to so he is having red colored pupil of the eye which shakes which moves here and there shining with anger shining with harshness 
because he is looking at evil forces for destroying them and with uh, virtuous forces for protecting the virtuous forces he has taken a very sporting form avatara and that sporting form is full of compassion full of softness full of mm-hmm. beneficence that benevolence that kind of avatara who is encouraging all virtuous forces to come up and all evil forces to be destroyed now the uh, best of yogis are thinking about him as being at the center of all knowledge and also as being at the center of all creation that ganapati that shivaputra i praise ಸುರನ್ನಿಷ್ಠುರಾಲೋಲಪಿಂಗಾಕ್ಷಿತಾರಂ ಕೃಪಾತೋಮಕೋಮಲೋದಾರಲೀಲಾವತಾರ ಕಲಾಬಿಂದುಗಂ ಗೀಯತೆ ಯೋಗಿವರ್ಯೈ ಗಣಾಧೀಶಮೀಶಾನ ಸೋನಂ ತಮೀಡೆ ಯಮೇಕಾಕ್ಷರ ನಿರ್ಮಲ ನಿರ್ವಿಕಲ್ಪ ಗುಣಾತೀತಮಾನಂದಮಾಕಾರಶೂನ್ಯ ಪರಂ ಪಾರಮೋಂಕಾರಮಾಂಗರ್ಭಂ ವದಂತಿ ಪ್ರಗಲ್ಭಂ ಪುರಾಣ ತಮೀಡೇ ನೌ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಟು ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಲೆಸ್ ಸೋ ಫಾರ್ ವಿ ವರ್ ಮೆಡಿಟೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಣಪತಿ ವಿತ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ornaments with various parts of his form being described now we are going moving from the form to the formless state the parabrahma state which has no form yam that ganapati eka aksharam he is unique why he is unique because he is akshara he is free from decay he is free from change he is free from destruction in fact the letters of the alphabet are known as akshara because you cannot break the letter further ka is ka you cannot do anything more to that whereas there are samyukta akshara combined the letters which can be broken into two or three letters whereas that they are not called aksharas so akshara 51 akaraji kshakarantam that is why it's called akshara aksha that is another uh, interesting background to it the name akshara also stems from this reasoning starting from a ending with 51 letters now they are called the letter they are called akshara because they cannot be broken further similarly this akshara parabrahmam there is a akshara brahma yoga a chapter in bhagavad gita so akshara means something which is free from decay or destruction he is the only one parabrahma is the only one all other creation is subject to change subject to destruction nothing is going to remain forever nirmalam he is free from all impurities no impurity can approach him nirvikalpam he is not going to change there is no vikalpa is change alternative there is no change there is no alternative in his uh, state his state is unique and it is only one ekam that is the eka akshara so that unique state is not going to change free from change gunatitam guna atitam mean beyond gunas all this creation is marked by three gunas three characteristics three qualities sattva rajas and tamas sattva is peace shanti rajas is activity passion and um, tamas is either sagishness or himsa violence this is the mark of uh, tamas now all this creation if you see if you analyze is marked by the three gunas one of the three gunas will be prominent in all this creation and in the same person in the same human being sometimes sattva guna prevails sometimes rajoguna prevails sometimes tamoguna prevails so but this parabrahma is free from all the gunas because these gunas are attributes of maya and maya does not have any influence over him he takes the help of maya 
and does the creation. So he is beyond Maya, beyond Guna. Guna Tiritam. Anandam. He is the very form of bliss. Now all the things which we think are causing happiness to us in this world are causing us, giving us only temporary happiness. All Sukhas will have to end in Dukkha. There is a very famous shloka in Bhagavad Gita which says that everything which gives you happiness will have to give you sorrow at the end. There is no escape from it. Whereas Parabrahman is only happiness. There is no question of Dukkha there. Free from Dukkha. Dukkha Shonyam. That is the definition of Ananda. Akara Shonyam is also free from form. Parabrahman has no form. He has taken a form out of mercy for mankind. Paramparam. Paramparam means the other side of the ocean. Param is the other side. Now, which ocean? The ocean of samsara. He is on the other side of the ocean of samsara. Now we are on, we are inside this ocean. We are suffering in this ocean. Now we have to get out of this ocean. And if you pray to Ganapati, he will pull you out of this ocean to the other side. That is why he is called Paramparam. Omkaram, he is the Omkara, which is the essence of all the Vedas, which is starting point of the creation. Starting point of the creation is with Omkara. And Omkara contains in itself the entire Veda, entire creation. Just the syllable Om contains everything in itself. And because Parabrahman contains everything in himself, he is equated with Omkara. Amnaya Garbham. Amnaya means Vedas. He is the essence of all the Vedas. Amnaya Garbham. All Vedas have only one aim, and that aim is to take mankind towards Parabrahman. There is no other aim. For that, they have prescribed various karmas, they have prescribed Bhakti Marga, they have prescribed Jnana Marga, etc. Now, all this, the sole purpose is to lead us to Parabrahman. Now, that Parabrahman is the essence, is at the center of the Vedas. And all the activities, all the karmas, all the paths of bhakti, all the paths of jnana are for the sole purpose of attaining the center that is Parabrahman. And he is the essence of all the Vedas. Vadanti, yam, vadanti, we started with yam, that Ganapati, people say, vadanti means say, who say, who, who is the person who is saying all this? Great souls, Vedas, all the avatars, all the great people, they say all this. What they say? All this, whatever we have seen. This is the description of Parabrahman. is endorsed by all great men. Pragalbham, further description is there. Pragalbham means he is very profound, very deep, very majestic. Gambira. Puranam, he is very ancient. Because there is nothing which can date before Parabrahma. Because Parabrahma is ever present. He is not bound by limitations of time and space. Time and space are limitations for the created beings. Now, the, the force which is creating, that is the Parabrahma, is beyond time and space. So, naturally, he is very ancient. So, that Ganapati, I pray to. So that Ganapati, who is free from destruction, who is unique, who is free from impurity, who is free from change, who is beyond the three gunas, he is bliss incarnate, he is free from form, he is on the other side of the ocean of samsara, he is the very form of Omkara, he is the very essence of Vedas, and great men have endorsed all these thoughts about Par Parabrahma, and he is very profound, very deep, and he is very ancient. That Ganapati, I pray. Yamekaksharam nirmalam nirvikalpam gunati tamananda makara shunyam paramparam omkaram amna yagarbham vadanti pragalbham puranam tamide. We stop now at the time. Uh, if there are any questions, we will quickly address them. Any questions? Kala Malini. There has been no questions, Mama. We shared the script of the, uh, the PDF uh, uh, script we shared. Hmm. 
uh, so that is what we did no, no okay. doubts okay 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 so we uh, continue with this uh, session in english tomorrow evening at 6:30 ist and the tamil session tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock as already announced i hope to meet all of you again all the best wishes tab parvati patai har har mahadeva